In the vast expanse of the South Pacific, where danger lurks behind every wave and the skies are perilous, the narrative of two airmen unfolds, a tale of bravery, adversity, and the eternal spirit of survival. Shot down over enemy territory, they find themselves adrift in a sea of uncertainty, their sole lifeline a little raft bobbing amidst their plane's debris. But as they cling to hope amidst the salty sting of open wounds and the relentless assault of enemy fire, their journey becomes a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, a story that will keep you on the edge of your seat, captivated by the unwavering determination of two men fighting against all odds to return home. In the early hours of the first week of November 1944, the pilots of Air Group 15 found themselves in a frenzy of activity on board the USS Essex, a bustling hive of preparation and anticipation. On the tragic morning of November 6, with the sun barely over the horizon, a mighty armada launched from the Essex's deck. Leading the charge were 26 F-6F Hellcat fighters with sleek frames primed for action, accompanied by the robust profiles of nine SB-2C Helldiver dive bombers and the recognizable silhouettes of five TBM Avenger torpedo bombers. What's their destination? None other than the vast horizons where the Pacific Ocean meets the Philippine shores. Under the direction of Admiral W.F. Bull Halsey, these valiant aviators formed the forefront of a united task force aiming at dealing a devastating blow to the Japanese forces stationed at Clark Field. However, their task was not limited to the airfields, they also targeted enemy vessels lurking in the waters of Manila and Salanguan harbors, crucial bastions of Japanese might in the Pacific theater. With steely nerves and determination, they soared over the great expanse of the Pacific, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead in their heroic pursuit of triumph. Young Helldivers Lieutenant William S. Bill Rising, perched in the cockpit of an SB-2C Helldiver, exemplified the essence of daring and commitment as he prepared to lead his aircraft into the thick of the action. His comrade-in-arms, Arm 2-C John Montgomery, stood by his side and exemplified the strength and bravery of youth, despite the weight of responsibility on his shoulders. Just seven days before, John had celebrated his 21st birthday, a joyous celebration now overshadowed by the gravity of their impending mission, a quest loaded with danger but brimming with the potential of victory. As the aircraft soared onward, cutting through the clean early air with relentless fury, the horizon beckoned ominously, suggesting the battleground that lay below, Manila, a metropolis plagued by strife, loomed on the horizon, its docks functioning as a key hub in the ever-changing theater of combat. Despite the confusion and uncertainty that hung heavily in the air, Lieutenant Rising remained determined, his focus concentrated firmly on the work at hand. With each passing instant, the tension in the cockpit increased, a physical reminder of the danger that lay ahead. The scream of engines echoed throughout the fuselage, drowning out the noise of distant explosions on the horizon. Ground fire erupted intermittently, spreading ephemeral shadows over the sun-drenched heavens, a foreboding of the dangers that awaited them underneath. Despite the approaching threat of disaster, Lieutenant Rising remained unfazed, his steely resolve unshaken by the challenges that lay ahead. He gave a nod of confirmation to John, his trusty colleague, as a subtle acknowledgement of the link that bound them together in their common purpose. They would brave the storm together, confronting the enemy with courage and determination, their hearts full of hope for success. As the aircraft approached its target, tension in the cockpit rose to a fever pitch, with the loud scream of engines drowned out by the tremendous chorus of exploding shells. Despite the tumult and confusion, Lieutenant Rising remained constant, his gaze fixated on the distant horizon. He expertly maneuvered the airplane into a steep descent, careening recklessly towards their destination. Around them, the air cracked with the wicked fury of enemy fire, a never-ending bombardment of bullets and shells that threatened to swallow them at any time. Lieutenant Rising persisted, his determination unwavering in the face of adversity. The adversary moved closer with each passing second, their presence becoming increasingly visible on the horizon. However, Lieutenant Rising would not be deterred. With steel nerves and a brave heart, he charged into the conflict, unwaveringly guiding his aircraft into the center of the tempest. 
And, despite the dangers that lay ahead, Lieutenant Rising believed that those who were brave enough to grasp it would be victorious. Escape for safety. In the horrific wake of the enemy's deadly attack, the once proud aircraft, now crippled and beaten, struggled to keep its tenuous grip on the skies. Lieutenant Rising, his hands grasping the controls with a vice-like determination, battled the powerful forces of fate, every sinew of his existence dedicated to the single aim of survival. Montgomery stood behind him, his serenity a facade for the fury blazing within, bracing himself for the inevitable, his mind consumed by the terrible idea of what was ahead. Lieutenant Rising used enormous effort to bring the crippled aircraft back to a semblance of stability, demonstrating his unshakable resolve in the face of tremendous difficulties. Even when the immediate prospect of calamity faded, a new challenge arose, testing their fortitude and endurance. As they flew away from the embattled shores of Manila Bay, their minds raced with the sobering understanding that their adventure was far from finished. Every passing instant pushed them closer to the enormous expanse of the open sea, which was both merciless and unexpected. Montgomery, his fingers tracing the pattern of the life raft nestled alongside him, braced himself for the challenges that were ahead, every instinct tuned to ensure their survival against all obstacles. As the Helldiver dropped into the turbulent seas below, the boom of the waves rose to meet them, drowning out all other sounds. Montgomery's senses were heightened by the excitement rushing through his veins, and he braced himself against the hit, tensing his body in preparation of the crash. The airplane reached the ocean's surface with a startling thud, sending shockwaves racing through its shattered frame. For a moment, time seemed to stand still as the world was engulfed in confusion and uncertainty. Despite the chaos, a sense of grim determination prevailed, their bold effort for freedom had succeeded, albeit by the smallest of margins. Lieutenant Rising and Montgomery escaped from the debris, battered but unbroken, to face the immense expanse of the open sea, a place both hazardous and ruthless. Despite seemingly overwhelming circumstances, their spirits remained unbroken, their resolve as firm as the unrelenting waves that surrounding them. With the threat of enemy capture approaching, they realized their survival depended on nothing less than unshakable courage and unbreakable commitment. And so, with hearts burning with defiance, they headed forth into the unknown, their destiny inexorably linked to the wide and untamed expanse of the sea. Lieutenant Bill Rising and Montgomery were caught up in a desperate struggle for survival in the last seconds before their aircraft surrendered to the inexorable grip of the ocean's depths. With each passing second, the floods surged steadily around them, threatening to cover the cockpit in a crushing flood. Lieutenant Rising, his senses enhanced by the urgency of their situation, climbed onto the dangerous perch of the wing, his gaze concentrated on the life raft that carried the possibility of deliverance. Montgomery flung the raft toward his partner, the improvised craft arcing through the air as a poignant symbol of hope in the midst of mayhem. Even as the raft struck its target, fate intervened with a cruel twist of irony, spilling the contents of two ammunition boxes and entangling Montgomery in a tangled web of metal and debris. As the cockpit filled with water, the young gunner from Kentucky became imprisoned, his desperate efforts hampered by the weight of the ammunition and the merciless grip of his safety strap. Montgomery's greatest fears were verified in a heart-stopping moment of realization, he had neglected to unbuckle his safety belt during their adrenaline-fueled crash landing. Panic threatened to engulf him as precious seconds ticked away, driving him closer to the abyss. He struggled against the suffocating embrace of the cockpit, his lungs burning with the desire for breath as the unrelenting tide closed in around him. Even when sorrow tried to consume him, a spark of determination flared within Montgomery's soul. Summoning all of his strength and resilience, he fought a valiant battle against the forces of fate, his every action a tribute to the indestructible human spirit. And then, in a moment of amazing defiance, he broke free from his captor's shackles, emerging from the debris gasping for air amid the swirling waves. Despite being pummeled and bruised, Montgomery surfaced, buoyed by the life jacket that now encased him. Only one side inflated, placing him at an odd angle, but he didn't mind, he was alive in that moment. As he coughed up the briny water that had filled his lungs, Montgomery's heart overflowed with appreciation for the priceless gift of life in the brutal expanse of the open sea. 
And, despite the formidable tasks that lied ahead, he approached them with a renewed sense of purpose, his spirit untouched by the tribulations that had led him to the brink of oblivion. Stranded at Sea The salty water's continuous attack on Montgomery's injured ankles was a constant source of anguish, with each sting a terrible reminder of the harrowing struggle they had been through. The enemy's flak had ripped into his flesh, leaving exposed wounds that burned with each contact with the merciless sea. Lieutenant Rising, meantime, struggled with the unsettling fuzziness that clouded his consciousness as a direct result of the head damage he had incurred during their aircraft's abrupt crash with the ocean's surface. The incident had caused immediate and severe disruption. As the jet plunged into the sea, the power of the impact caused the cans containing their critical freshwater supply to break open, mingling with identifying dye, making them completely useless to the desperate men trying to keep afloat. Within minutes, the Helldiver, their vessel of safety and deliverance, sank beneath the waves, taking with it all prospect of relocating emergency food. Rising and Montgomery found themselves adrift in the immense ocean of the South Pacific, facing the harsh reality of their plight. Two beaten and wounded guys were clinging to a small raft that provided little protection from the elements. They were without supplies, fresh water, and faced the frightening possibility of surviving in one of the most harsh regions on earth. Despite the misery, a gleam of optimism arose. Other fighters circled over them, providing a reassuring presence in an otherwise bleak terrain, for a little period, they weren't alone in their struggle. A life jacket, a water canteen, and eventually a life raft were thrown from above to provide relief. However, even as these signs of salvation arrived, they realized that their rescuers were running low on fuel, and their time to help was limited. As the other task force planes left for their ships, Rising and Montgomery were left to deal with the brutal truth of their situation. Alone once more, except for each other's company, they braced themselves for the long and grueling voyage ahead, resolved to beat the odds and triumph over the brutal forces of nature that now endangered their very life. The two airmen got strength from the idea that they were not alone, even in the great expanse of the ocean. Together with their fellow pilots, they clung to the hope sparked by the presence of an American submarine nearby. Before the squadron left for refueling, important radio signals transmitted the reassuring news, the submarine, only 21 minutes away, was ready to rescue them from the clutches of the merciless sea. However, as the hours passed and the light rose higher in the sky, Rising and Montgomery's hearts plummeted with the realization that rescue had not arrived as planned. In the face of escalating disappointment, their attitude evolved from eager anticipation to grim caution. No longer watching the horizon in enthusiastic anticipation of their saviors, they now cast a wary eye over the waves, looking for telltale signs of Japanese gunboats stalking the waters. Their gaze also scoured the skies, looking for any sign of enemy aircraft that could pose another threat. Amidst the immense expanse of the South Pacific, their hopes for rescue faded as their will to survive became stronger, propelling them to remain watchful against the numerous hazards that surrounded them. Landfall As time passed, each instant loaded with uncertainty and danger, the two airmen were confronted not only with the need to survive, but also with the necessity of devising an escape and evasion plan. Adrift on the broad expanse of the merciless sea, they were acutely conscious of their vulnerability, knowing only too well that they were at the whim of enemy patrols and surveillance. Their vulnerability was highlighted when a Japanese seaplane flying above discovered their little raft. The unexpected sound of its engines signaled danger, and before they could respond, the sky exploded with the rattle of gunfire as bullets flew through the air, puncturing their delicate vessel. Both soldiers miraculously survived the attack, but the ordeal served as a sobering reminder of the continual danger they faced. With their immediate safety jeopardized, men switched their attention to the difficult chore of strategizing their next move. They surveyed the horizon with resolute resolve, carefully weighing their alternatives, fully aware of the risks associated with attempting to reach the nearest shore of Luzon which was heavily guarded and teeming with enemy forces. Instead, they went for a risky ploy, focusing their attention on the smaller, less prominent Fortune Island, a little speck on the map but a potential shelter from their foe's unrelenting pursuit. 
It was a calculated wager in the high-stakes game of survival, motivated by necessity and despair. They rode hard against the inexorable currents, propelling themselves through the growing dusk, driven by a sole goal to avoid capture and secure their freedom. With each stroke of the oars, they got closer to their elusive haven, buoyed by a glimmer of hope on the horizon. As night fell on the stormy waters, shrouding their movements in darkness, they finally made landfall on the shores of Fortune Island, their bodies exhausted but their spirits unwavering. Hiding their raft in the shadows, they sought safety in the embrace of much-needed slumber, believing that the darkness would protect them from inquisitive eyes and provide a small respite from the never-ending struggle for survival. But, even in the dark, their labor was far from over. Under the cover of darkness, they methodically patched the bullet holes in their wrecked craft, assuring its seaworthiness for the next stage of their risky journey. And then, in the midst of the darkness and solitude of the night, an unexpected gift from the sea arrived, a flying fish, its glittering scales glinting in the moonlight as it landed on their raft with a gentle thud. For a brief moment, amazement turned to thankfulness as they recognized the meaning of this small offering, a symbol of hope and sustenance in the face of tragedy. With thankful hearts, they wasted no time in utilizing this unexpected blessing, cutting the fish into large parts and dividing its meat, a poor but valuable source of food in their continued struggle for existence. So, beneath the canopy of stars, amongst the soft lapping of the waves against the shore, two tired souls found peace in one other's company, their bond formed in the furnace of adversity, their determination unwavering in the face of insurmountable difficulties. As they got closer to the island, the distant lights of Nasugbu appeared on the horizon, a beacon of civilization in the midst of the huge ocean. However, rather of heading for the promise of refuge, the two pilots chose prudence, diverting away from the inhabited area to avoid any potential signals of the enemy's presence. With each stroke of the oar, they pushed on, navigating the hazardous waters with a single-minded desire to avoid capture and secure their freedom. Their perseverance finally paid off when they discovered a secluded cove, hidden from prying eyes by the deep foliage of the surrounding rainforest. They landed their raft on the sandy coast and walked several hundred yards inland, seeking refuge from their attackers' unrelenting pursuit. The modest crowing of a rooster heralded the advent of dawn and served as a reminder of the passage of time. However, it also signaled the existence of civilization approaching, which filled the exhausted pilgrims with both hope and anxiety. They took cautious steps towards the source of the sound, eventually discovering a humble cottage set amidst the beautiful surroundings. Leon Lagos, a member of the Phil-American Gorillas, greeted them warmly and extended a hand of kindness to the weary visitors. As plans were made to provide food and shelter for the two soldiers, Lagos dispatched his men to the cove, ensuring that the American's life raft was hidden from curious eyes. Meanwhile, his son Andres, who is proficient in English and good at bridging cultural gaps, served as a helpful interpreter, allowing the dissimilar parties to communicate effectively. In the days that followed, the guerrillas would prove to be crucial allies, protecting and assisting the downed airmen as they sought safety from their adversaries' unrelenting pursuit with unflinching tenacity and the backing of their newfound companions, Rising and Montgomery set off on the next part of their perilous adventure believing in the human spirit's resilience to guide them through the hardships that lied ahead. An Adventure for Survival In the weeks that followed, the tie between the two American airmen and the residents of the rural farms in the Japanese-occupied Philippine Islands became stronger as they formed a deep connection based on mutual trust and shared tragedy. In the face of German patrols and shortages, the destitute farmers exhibited incredible compassion, voluntarily donating what little they had to help the trapped airmen. Montgomery and Rising's survival relied not just on their own resourcefulness, but also on the generosity and sympathy of these ordinary people. Despite the constant fear of vengeance from enemy forces, the farmers welcomed the weary travelers into their homes and hearts, sharing their few rations and providing refuge in the face of peril. Despite this demonstration of altruism, the terrible realities of their situation remained ever-present. Montgomery's untreated wounds from their perilous drop into the ocean festered in the humid tropical atmosphere, endangering his life. Despite excruciating pain, he fought against the relentless attack of infection, 
clinging to life amid the chaos of uncertainty and terror. Hope shone weakly in the darkness when, finally, one of their newfound pals discovered a valuable commodity, a supply of sulfa, a strong antibiotic capable of battling the insidious sickness devouring Montgomery's body. With each dose, the infection faded, providing a ray of hope amidst the never-ending struggle to survive. In the furnace of hardship, the human spirit's tenacity shone brightly, illuminating the path forward among the looming shadows of despair. Montgomery and Rising found peace and strength in the selfless acts of generosity and compassion of people who shared their journey, reaffirming their faith in mankind despite the chaos of war. Though their struggles were far from over, they approached the challenges ahead with fresh hope and tenacity, unified in their desire to fight the odds and triumph over the forces that wanted to extinguish their spirit. The partnership formed between American airmen and local people went beyond simple gestures of compassion, it was a bond based on shared risk and mutual survival. In extending their few resources to support the Americans, these brave folks also extended an invitation to danger, willingly putting themselves in harm's way to help strangers in need. Their selflessness was especially impressive given the ferocious opposition they faced, the same brutal enemy who staged the historic Bataan Death March, leaving a trail of pain and death in its wake. The civilians and insurgents who hid and led the two men were well aware of the serious risks involved. Any suggestion of their cooperation with the Americans would result in rapid and savage retaliation, with violence heaped on both the innocent and the guilty equally. Every curve on their route through hostile territory brought new dangers. The guerrillas, seasoned in the art of evasion, moved with the precision of shadows, navigating the hazardous terrain while being acutely aware of the ever-present threat posed by enemy patrols. They took each step with caution, crossing rice paddies on their bellies, taking refuge in the shelter of hills, and grabbing moments of rest in the confines of concealed shelters. However, even the best laid strategies could not always protect them from the dangers that lay ahead. Point one tragic night, as they found cover in a small cabin along the coast, they were awakened by the sound of Japanese voices, a terrible reminder of the enemy's presence. An enemy destroyer lay in wait nearby, hidden beneath the cover of darkness and foliage, its presence a sharp reminder of the continual menace that loomed over them like a phantom in the night. In the face of such adversity, the link formed between the Americans, local residents, and insurgents grew stronger, unified by a single goal and a shared commitment to overcome the odds and triumph over the forces of tyranny and oppression. Even though the road ahead was laden with danger, they moved on, gaining strength from the unyielding resolve that blazed within their souls, led by the unflinching certainty that hope would triumph even in the darkest of times. Mrs. Sarah Catherine Montgomery's world appeared to crumble around her on that dreadful December day, when she got the feared Western Union telegram informing her of her son's absence. The grave lines inscribed on the parchment revealed a painful fact that no mother should ever have to face, uncertainty about her child's destiny in the middle of war's turmoil and savagery. As she struggled with the crushing weight of grief and anguish, she clung to a sliver of hope praying for her son's safe return even as the shadows of uncertainty became larger. Meanwhile, within the difficult terrain and dense forest of the Natipuan Mountain Fortress, John Montgomery and Bill Rising were forced into a world of resistance and resilience, where the struggle for independence blazed brightly against the darkness of enemy occupation. They discovered a new feeling of purpose and unity among the daring guerrilla fighters led by ROTC cadets and seasoned veterans, a kinship formed in the crucible of shared sacrifice and destiny. Led deeper into the hills, they joined forces with Colonel Terry Magdengal's guerrilla outfit, where they were hailed by a group of fellow Americans whose stories of survival and courage mirrored their own. Among them were Lieutenant J.G. Donald Dondero, C.P.O. Bert C. Fuller, and Sergeant Raymond Humphreys, men who had withstood the storm of imprisonment and emerged as beacons of hope in a dark world. As they gathered around the flickering campfire, the air thick with the aroma of perspiration and gunpowder, they told stories of success and sorrow, finding solace in the company of like-minded people who knew the weight of their load and the strength of their will. For the first time in weeks, they felt the warmth of friendship and the reassurance of solidarity, a ray of hope in the middle of despair. However, their reprieve was brief, as the call to action beckoned once more 
propelling them onward to the distant beaches of independence and liberation. With courage in their hearts and determination in their spirits, they set out on a risky trek south across enemy territory, inspired by the steadfast certainty that victory lay ahead. Though the road ahead was laden with danger and uncertainty, they carried on, driven by an unrelenting determination to overcome the odds and triumph over the forces of tyranny and oppression. With each step, they got closer to their ultimate goal, fueled by the tenacious energy of the human soul and the unbreakable connections of brotherhood that linked them together as one. Even though their route was laden with danger, they marched on with heads held high, guided by the eternal promise of liberty and the undying force of hope. Back in American Hands The perilous voyage lasted several grueling days, each packed with danger and uncertainty as the fugitive Americans went through enemy territory with the assistance of brave villagers who risked everything to help them. Hiding in the shadows of their tiny dwellings, these generous individuals provided shelter and contributed what little they had to support their newfound allies on their treacherous journey to freedom. The men were secretly carried from the mountainous terrain of Luzon to the inky seas of Belayan Bay aboard small boats. With each wave that lapped against the hull, they got closer to their destination, the northern shore of Mindoro, where another stronghold of resistance awaited them. As they arrived into Mindoro's sandy shores, they were confronted by another guerrilla group, this time led by Commander George Rowe of the United States Navy. They sought refuge here, amidst the impenetrable jungle and blistering heat, among friends united in their struggle against oppressive forces. Under Rowe's leadership, they would continue their quest for freedom, their commitment unshaken by the trials they had faced thus far. Though the road ahead was plagued with danger and uncertainty, they found strength in the brotherhood of their fellow fighters and the steadfast hope that victory was within reach. So, as they marched into the unknown, guided by the flickering flame of hope that burned brightly in their hearts, they remained constant in their vow to overcome the odds and prevail over the forces of tyranny and oppression. They understood that if they stood together, unified in purpose and conviction, nothing could stop them. As they waited for rescue in Mindoro's blistering heat and suffocating humidity, John Montgomery's condition deteriorated, as a high fever gripped his fragile body and refused to relent for four excruciating days. With each passing hour, the weight of uncertainty fell on them, throwing a pall of worry and apprehension over their already perilous predicament. Finally, a ray of hope appeared when the plan for their rescue was conveyed to Commander Rowe by radio, a lifeline in the midst of the sea of misery that threatened to overwhelm them. The instructions were simple but full of promise. They were to sit offshore in a small rowboat, unfurling the stars and stripes of the American flag as a beacon of hope in the vastness of the ocean. The Americans followed the specified method with fear and fragility, relying on the narrow thread of possibility that hung suspended in the air. For eleven torturous days, they remained vigilant, their pulses beating with expectation at the faintest hint of approaching help. However, their efforts were in vain, as the passing days brought nothing except the unwelcome attention of Japanese planes, their foreboding presence a terrible reminder of the ever-present perils lurking beyond the horizon. Finally, the plan was grudgingly abandoned, a difficult pill to swallow after weeks of anxious anticipation. However, fate had other plans for them, as the tide of war switched again with the arrival of American Marines on Mindoro's coasts. In the midst of the turmoil of invasion, PT-222 and PT-220 from the MTB squadron rescued them, ushering in a new chapter in their path to freedom. After being liberated by the loud roar of bombs and the tremendous clash of steel, the freed Americans spent the night with the invasion forces, witnessing the intense fight raging around them. Despite the chaos and devastation, they found refuge in the brotherhood of their fellow troops, their spirits bolstered by the human spirit's unbreakable resilience in the face of hardship. As Christmas Eve approached the beachhead of Leyte, they met with their friends to share in the bittersweet joy of the festive season among the chaos of war. On Christmas Day, they broke bread with their fellow sailors on board the USS Currituck, their hearts swelled with thankfulness for the basic pleasures of friendship and company in the face of stress. Among the exchange of gifts and friends' laughter, John Montgomery got a humble contribution from the Red Cross, a bar of soap, writing paper, and a broken pencil, a sign of their compassion in the midst of conflict. 
However, as he held these simple gifts in his hands, he realized that no tangible item could ever compare to the priceless gift of freedom that he now treasured in his heart, a gift that no hardship or suffering could ever revoke. Lieutenant Rising and Montgomery set out from Lady's shores on the next part of their voyage, their objective a distant light of hope in the middle of battle. They were flown to Manus, a remote Pacific island colony, where they faced a new chapter in their struggle for freedom. With each passing mile, they got closer to their ultimate goal, the luscious coastlines of Hawaii, where they could be safe and secure. And as the sun rose on a new day, Lieutenant Rising said his goodbyes to his friends, his heart heavy with the weight of separation but lifted by the prospect of a joyful reunion with his loving wife and their small child. Lieutenant Rising's voyage home was a bittersweet symphony of emotions, a frenzy of anticipation and desire as he set off on the long trek back to the United States. Across vast oceans and faraway lands, his mind was absorbed by the sight of his wife, her face etched with love and desire as she waited for his return. And then, finally, the moment of reunion arrived, Lieutenant Rising's plane touched down on American soil, his heart beating with excitement as he ran to greet his beloved wife and kid. In that fleeting moment of ecstasy and tenderness, the world seemed to stand still, the tumult of war paled in comparison to their undying love. Despite the joy of their reunion, Lieutenant Rising's thoughts shifted to duty and honor, his loyalty to his country outweighing the delights of home and hearth. With a heavy heart, he said goodbye to his family once more, his resolve unwavering as he prepared for another tour of duty. Lieutenant Rising saw the call of service as a siren song, beckoning him back to the sky to continue serving his country with courage and honor. So, with steely resolve and a brave heart, he returned to the front lines, where he would end the war flying, single-seater, planes, demonstrating his unwavering devotion to freedom and justice in the face of adversity. A Homecoming John Montgomery's trip did not finish with his return to American soil, rather, it began a new chapter in his life, one marked by perseverance, persistence, and unshakable devotion to duty. Joining the ranks of numerous returning Americans in Operation Magic Carpet, he returned to the shores of Alameda, California, on an escort carrier, a triumphal homecoming tainted with memories of battles fought and colleagues lost. Montgomery wasted no time resuming his civilian life after arriving in January, still dressed in marine greens and the large army boots he had been awarded on the beachhead of southern Mindoro. Following a well-deserved 30-day leave with loved ones, he reported to the Naval Air Training Center in Memphis. He went on a voyage of refresher training and skill development. From gunnery school to a PB-4Y squadron in Jacksonville, Florida, Montgomery faced each new task with trademark grit, his dedication to greatness unflinching in the face of adversity. On September 13, 1945, just 11 days after the signing of the capitulation documents that signaled the end of World War II, his military service came to an end when he was honorably dismissed from the Navy. Among his many medals and awards were the Distinguished Flying Cross, which he received for his valorous deeds on October 25, 1944, just days before being shot down, as well as the Air Medal, Purple Heart and several campaign and service ribbons, all of which attested to his heroism and dedication under fire when Montgomery returned to Shelbyville, Kentucky. He found solace in the familiar routines of civilian life, starting a career with the U.S. Postal Service that would last decades until his well-earned retirement. Nonetheless, his legacy of service and sacrifice lives on, engraved in history and recognized by his induction into the enlisted combat aircrew role of honor aboard the USS Yorktown in Patriots Point, South Carolina, on Veterans Day, 1997. Despite being unable to attend the ceremony in person, Montgomery's spirit loomed large, his words resonating through the hallways of time as he said to a local newspaper, my legs don't operate as they used to. I haven't even been able to display my flag, despite his absence, his kid stood erect, a proud monument to his father's long-standing tradition of valor and honor. Montgomery's memory lives on in the hearts of all who knew him, with his name enshrined in the hallowed halls of the United States Navy Memorial on Pennsylvania Avenue in our nation's capital, where a plaque and photograph serve as a poignant reminder of his selfless service and unwavering commitment to duty.
And, while the years pass and memories fade, his legacy of heroism and sacrifice will live on, serving as a beacon of hope and inspiration for future generations. Reflecting John Montgomery's friendship with his old companions from AG-15 and the USS Essex remained intact, demonstrating the enduring brotherhood established in the crucible of combat. Despite the sounds of war and recollections of fallen colleagues, his thoughts frequently drifted to the brave Filipino people and Phil-American guerrillas who had risked everything to assure his life. Years later, as he reflected on his wartime experiences, Montgomery expressed deep thanks to the Filipino people for their unselfish acts of generosity and sacrifice. With humility, he acknowledged the important assistance and unwavering courage of individuals such as Leon Lagos, Andres Lagos, L.A. de Sacala, and Pedro Reynosa. And many others whose names may have faded with time, but their actions will live on in his memory forever. Montgomery's words provide a vivid portrayal of the Filipino people's tenacious spirit and unflinching perseverance, as well as their boundless compassion and kindness. Despite their own incredible trials and privations, they had opened their hearts and homes to shelter and protect him from harm, their acts of bravery serving as a light of hope in a dark world. Montgomery saw their charity as more than a gesture of goodwill. It was a lifeline that had kept him going during the darkest days of his captivity, a testament to the power of human kindness to overcome adversity. And, even as the years passed and memories faded, his appreciation remained strong, a testament to the enduring connections formed in the crucible of war. Today, as he reflects on a life marked by sacrifice and duty, Montgomery is humbled by the fortitude and resilience of the Filipino people, whose selfless acts of heroism ensured his survival against all odds. Their legacy lives on in his heart, demonstrating the enduring power of compassion, courage, and sacrifice in the face of hardship. John Montgomery's reminiscences of his wartime experiences are laced with sadness as he remembers his companion and fellow pilot, Lieutenant William Rising. They had endured the dangers of combat sorties in the Pacific, their relationship formed in the crucible of adversity as they navigated the perilous skies of battle. Their shared experiences, being shot down over Manila Bay, undergoing six weeks of terrible escape and evasion in the Philippines' harsh hills, and then experiencing a dramatic rescue, had solidified their bond in the face of peril and uncertainty. However, despite their shared difficulties and victories, Lieutenant Rising was unfortunately unable to countersign Montgomery's 1958 letter in support of the valiant Phil-American guerrillas. Lieutenant Rising's reunion with his family after returning home from his second combat tour in 1945 was tragically cut short by a car accident. As they returned to New York from the West Coast, catastrophe struck, killing Rising and his young wife and leaving just their infant daughter to survive the tragic collision. The news of Rising's premature death placed a shadow of sadness over Montgomery's heart, reminding him of the fragility of life and the brutal reality of war's aftermath. In the aftermath of such devastating loss, Montgomery found solace in his departed comrades' cherished recollections, a monument to the enduring link of friendship formed in the fires of combat. Lieutenant Rising's life was tragically cut short, but his legacy lives on, a monument to his bravery, sacrifice, and steadfast dedication to duty. As Montgomery reflected on his close friend's memories, he took comfort in knowing that rising spirit would live on in the hearts of all who knew and loved him, a beacon of light in the darkness of sadness and loss. As the curtain lowers on their epic odyssey, the two airmen's survival story ends in a moment of magnificent triumph. Despite all obstacles, they emerge from the crucible of conflict as icons of tenacity and fortitude, their unrelenting determination a tribute to the human spirit's potential for greatness. But as their journey comes to an end, one question remains. What other untold experiences await those who dare to overcome the odds? Subscribe now to embark on fresh journeys of courage, friendship, and redemption, and join us as we continue to celebrate the victory of the human spirit over adversity. We poured our hearts and souls into each frame, hoping to take you on a mesmerizing journey through time. We're glad to hear your opinions. Did you enjoy the video? Was it informative, interesting, or perhaps even inspirational? We would love to hear from you in the comments section below. 
And, if you haven't already, please consider joining our community by subscribing to our channel. And, if you haven't already, please consider joining our community by subscribing to our channel. By clicking the bell button, you'll be kept up to speed on all of our latest releases, ensuring that you never miss out on another intriguing journey into the past. But wait, there's more. We want to hear from you. Do you have a particular historical topic that piques your interest? Leave us a comment with your thoughts, and who knows? Your suggestion may be the inspiration for our next video. So, friends, when you say goodbye, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. Your support means everything to us, and we can't wait to go on this historic trip alongside you. Until next time, be interested, stay connected, and continue to discover the treasures of our shared past. Cheers!